Welcome to the High School Physics Project. We're at the Oswego Country Club with golf professional William Weimer. He's going to help us do a physics problem. Now, the problem with high school is that we don't take into account all the fancy stuff, spin and, motion and, and angular momentum and things like that, that you would have to take into account if you're a golfer. So what we're going to ask Mr. Weimer to do is to hit the ball directly into the hole just so our math comes out perfect. Measure a distance of 8.7 meters, and then we set it up. Explain it that we want it to go directly into the hole. No bouncing, no rolling, into the hole. He prepares for the almost impossible golf shot. He addresses the ball. He takes a swing, perfectly in the hole. Oh yeah, there it is, okay. Hi, okay, let's do the math here. We draw a sketch first. The amazing shot of William Weimer. And it traveled a distance. And I measured that distance with a trundle wheel. It came up with 80, uh, 8.7 meters. Okay. Uh, I then measured the time. Now you could do it with a stopwatch. I actually uh, went to the video and used my time stamp and I came up with a time in the air of 1.86 seconds. So between going up in the air and coming back down it was a total of 1.86 seconds. Now the question is what's the velocity? Now trying to calculate the velocity of your swing is kind of difficult. You need some fancy equipment. But using this uh, setup you could do it. Let's go through those steps. Well, first of all, I know that it traveled in the x direction. So what was its x velocity, the velocity that carried it towards the hole? We call that velocity in the x-axis. And this velocity in the x-axis would be to x distance divided by uh, the time in the air, total time in the air. So the velocity in the x-axis would be equal to 8.7 meters divided by 1.86 seconds and if you plug it into your calculator pause plug it into your calculator calculate it yourself I did it 4.67 meters per second you were supposed to go do it yourself you're gonna let me do everything all right now let's think about this time in the air it went up in the air and then it came down but in this particular situation something unique happened it started and stopped at the same elevation. That won't always be true, but in this case it is. Started and stopped, which means it went up for a period of time, slowed down, slowed down because of gravity, stopped going up, and then started coming down again. And it came down for a period of time. And the total time in the air is equal to the time up plus the time down, and as it turns out those two are equal to each other so we can say that the total time in the air is equal to two times the time up which could say that the time it took to go up was equal to the total time in the air divided by two which is fine so the time it took to go up is equal to half of 1.86 which would be uh, 0.93 seconds now what does that do for us what does that give us well why didn't it go up forever? Well, the acceleration due to gravity. The acceleration due to gravity pulled it down. 9.8 meters per second squared. And what happens to acceleration is it changed the velocity. So we can say, uh, and by definition, that's what acceleration is. Acceleration is a change in velocity divided by time. The change in velocity divided by time. So let me clear off a little bit of space here and see what we can get. All right, I'm back. Acceleration defined simply as a change in velocity divided by time. Well, it goes up with some initial velocity in the y-axis. But in this particular situation, it stops going up, which means eventually it reaches a final velocity of zero. So in this unique situation, the change in velocity is also equal to the initial velocity. If it starts at 10 and goes to 0, well it changed 10. So I can say that my acceleration due to gravity is equal to my change in velocity divided by time, but then I can rewrite that as acceleration due to gravity is equal to my initial velocity in the y direction 
divided by time, which tells me my initial velocity in the y direction is acceleration due to gravity times time. So acceleration due to gravity is a known. Uh, g is always 9.8 meters per second squared. And multiply that by the time it took to go up. So 0.93 seconds and see what you get. Did you get a velocity in the y-axis of 9.114 meters per second? That's what I got. All right, let's look what I've got. I've got velocity in the x, velocity in the y. So now I've got velocity in the x-axis, which means when I hit this golf ball, it'll travel in the x-axis at a certain velocity, but it's also traveling up in the air at a certain velocity. And these are called vectors, and vectors can be dealt with in this triangular form, which is why they taught you that triangle stuff. And you'll notice something interesting. The actual velocity that the golf ball travels at is uh, the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Remember old Pythagorean that said the hypotenuse squared is equal to one leg squared plus the other leg squared? Possibly heard a squared plus b squared is equal to hypotenuse? Well, I'm going to step through the algebra very quickly. If uh, velocity squared is equal to uh, vy squared plus vx squared, then the velocity is equal to the square root of vy squared plus vx squared. So if you take vy, which you might still have on your calculator, square it, add it to vx, square that, hit enter, and then take the square root of that, it will tell you the actual velocity of the golf ball, which is a, a useful bit of information. Good luck trying it yourself. She's such a sweet thing. She's so exciting. She's so inviting. She really turns me on. She's such a sweet thing. A little closer I keep my composure And that's what turns her on But I just as soon make things quite clear Though here and now I don't know what to say Don't want to sound like it come on Why do I feel this way? She's such a sweet Exciting, she's so inviting, she really turns me on. She's such a sweet thing, a little closer. I must get to know her before she slips away. I fantasize how we could be. I picture each romantic rendezvous. Imagine her voice. Exciting, she's so inviting.